everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. We are going to be going over COVID-19 vaccination toolkit. We are going to give you those tools, whether you are mandating a vaccination uh, requirement within your organization or you're making it um, optional. We're also going to be looking at four return to work strategies and more. I'm Sinead Scrisopi, Customer Success here at ESM Insight, and I'm joined by two experts that are going to be giving you all the information today. We have Abe Jabon, he's our VP of Claims Advocacy, and we have Anthony Poston, our CEO and Expert Risk Manager. A little presentation housekeeping. Today's webinar is going to be workers' comp focused. It's going to be safety and Cal OSHA compliant. We have a lot of resources that are going to be that framework for your COVID risk management. And then, of course, if you have any questions after watching this webinar, feel free to reach out to us via email. So our webinar series, we are now 13 webinars in, which always takes me back when I see this slide. Last year in March, something that seemed so temporary, that exposure control plan webinar, we thought we were going to be in this uh, pandemic for about, well, we didn't even know it was a pandemic at that point. We thought it was only going to last two weeks, and it has now become our new normal. So we're now here. It's been a year. That's amazing. No, it's, a you know, looking, year. looking at the slide, even having two lines, I feel like is a lot. There's been a lot of information that we have learned about. Uh, we've definitely had to pivot and really dive in to learn what resources our clients needed. So we're now here in March with our vaccination toolkit and some return to work strategies. So this is our humble brag for 2021, our webinar stats. We've already surpassed our 2020 webinars. We've really found that our clients want to hear more about how to manage their workers' comp and safety programs, especially when it come, becomes um, COVID related. So we have hosted 15 plus webinars this year alone. We've had 1,600 registered attendees and we've talked for over 2,900 minutes. And that is 48.33 hours. That is a lot of talking all about COVID-19. Today's topics, we're going to be talking about that vaccination toolkit. We have workers' comp and claims reporting that we're going to be going over, your safety audit and updating your IIPP, best practices there. We have a rehire safety orientation toolkit, as well as we have some COVID-19 refresher trainings that are within the Insight portal. But before we get started, I'm going to turn it over to you, Anthony, for our disclaimer. Great. Thank you, uh, Sinead. Welcome, everybody. So just a quick disclaimer, uh, we want to make sure that we give you a lot of really good tools and action items, but you also need to discuss with legal or contact us directly about any case specific situation. So we've tried to accumulate all this information from different conversations we've had, different claims that we've experienced, uh, and wrap that into a presentation that we give you within an hour. So just a quick disclaimer, this isn't, uh, shouldn't be deemed as actual legal or compliance advice. We need to know more about the specific facts in order to actually provide that kind of information. So quick disclaimer, Sinead, let's roll this over to, I think actually, Abe, you're up next. Great. Yeah, it always depends with the, the legal <laughs> advice as depends. we've seen. It, <laughs> it depends. We're going to get t-shirts. We've talked about it before. All right. So let's take a look at a quick snapshot of all the COVID claims by month and by region here. Just taking a look back at the, the last year, really pretty significant exposure and, and a lot of burden on employers. And we, if you take a look and add all this up, it's about 130,000 COVID claims through the end of last January. And these are stats as of February 22nd. Uh, we were doing pretty well after the summer of 2020. And then we saw a really big uptick over the holidays. And we're still dealing with the residual effects of that. Obviously, now we have the vaccine uh, already being implemented approximately 11 or 12 million have been vaccinated. Of course, there's a couple doses uh, that are required for uh, certain types of the vaccine. So we're still, we're still going to be dealing with the residual effects of this maybe through the end of this year, but time will tell. The last time I checked, it was about 3.6 million cases. And this is about 9% of the California population. So you know, even with the vaccines rolling out, we still have a long way to go on that front as well. So that kind of ties into what employers are thinking about during this time. Are we going to mandate this vaccine? Uh, you can switch the, the slide, Sinead. Are we going to mandate the vaccine or make it 
you know, strongly recommended? Can an employer require employees to get vaccinated? Well, we did a prior webinar with uh, defense attorneys on this topic, our, our partners over at Littler, uh, which is also gonna be available in our portal, but we're not here to recommend, uh, throw back to the disclaimer, we're not here to recommend a voluntary versus mandatory policy. You're gonna wanna seek legal counsel on that, but a lot of the employers we've been working with have been choosing the voluntary slash strongly recommended vaccine program. And there's a variety of reasons for that. Um, some of them include workers' compensation exposure. If you require your employees to get a vaccine, some of them may have an adverse reaction, um, it, it, even if that is rare, or maybe it's not even uh, correlated or uh, have to do with the actual vaccine itself. Uh, so you just wanna keep in mind that there's additional exposure, not only on the workers' comp front, but also on the legal liability and discrimination front, right? If certain employees decide that they don't want to get uh, the vaccine for whatever reason, it may be a valid reason, which we'll talk about, but you wanna make sure that you're treating everybody the same. You're gonna have more administrative costs when you're mandating the vaccine. So again, you may need this as part of your business operation to, to make it mandatory, but there are considerations on both sides to, to make sure that you're evaluating before you implement the program.